I'll look at the camera to say hello, and then I'm going to look at my trading screen, if you don't mind. Uh, this is Ilan Asbel, Hawaii. You can see it's early, early in the morning for me. It's 5 a.m. here in Austin, Texas. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just a, a few minutes late. It uh, looks like there was a bit of a mix-up with the, the time zones. Um, uh, wherever you are in the morning, good afternoon or good morning, uh, wherever you are, and uh, obviously excuse uh, the casual setting. It's um, uh, you know 5 a.m. and I'm at home, obviously, due to corona and COVID. And, um, and I guess that uh, leads me straight into the, the reason for this um, uh, for this broadcast, right, uh, is uh, with all the market volatility that's been going on, uh, I'm sure that a ton of you are um, uh, either making a ton of money or losing a ton of money, right? And so uh, this presentation is all about uh, how to manage your risk okay, in, uh, in, in, in the currency market, especially given uh, the current... Uh, the current volatility that's going on. Um, uh, so I've got my MetaTrader uh, screen uh, open, obviously, as you as you can as you can see, and um, and uh, I uh, um, let me let me actually change my chart to to something other than uh, uh, Nasdaq uh, Nasdaq 100. Give me a moment. Um, uh, to just find all my uh, all the correct indicators. Okay, cool. So um, massive volatility, obviously, as I was saying, and um, and so uh, what I find before I open the risk calculator, what I find in the market is that traders are um, uh, traders try to manage their risk in in a slightly weird way, right? They, they try to manage their risk in a way that makes sense to them, but doesn't really make sense from a from an actual uh, trading perspective. And let me, let me show you what I mean. So um, let's just say that I'm trading a an hourly chart, right, on EURUSD. And uh, I want to, let's say the trend is short, going short right now, and I wanna, and I wanna set a, a short position at the spot price. Now, I want to set a stop loss level, okay? And so uh, I, I want to set a stop loss level and the current price is 112.039 and I want to set a stop loss level of, uh, you know, of maybe 20 pips or 30 pips. So what happens is that the person actually, the traders um, uh, kind of sets their stop loss level at, uh, at the amount of money that, uh, well, really at, at, you know, 10 pips or 20 pips or whatever it is. But as you can see, if I want to set my stop loss level, uh, you know, at just a, at just a few pips of, of potential loss, it doesn't necessarily make sense from the volatility of the, of the instrument, right? Um, and, uh, and uh, you can see that in, in this situation, um, the, the instrument is very very capable of of swinging 10 pips 20 pips up and down you know without a problem and a lot of traders get knocked out due to uh due to market uh volatility right which is not what you want to do what you want to try and do uh, when trading is is set your stop loss so that it's uh, in line with market volatility so for example if you were going short right now where I would set my stop loss is around this level over here um, with the red line, because that's where the previous, let's say the previous turning point is, right? The market, the market. So, so what you're doing, if you go short, you're giving yourself enough room to go up and down, right? Let's say if you were going long, let's say you were a swing trader and you were going long. Uh, now, um, you might say, okay, I want to go long. Where should be my stop loss? Again, you might look at, uh, these levels over here that I've drawn, uh, because again, what you can see is you can see kind of past uh, volatility or turning points happening in that level, right? So, so you should be setting your uh, your stop losses really in accordance to uh, where the market could possibly go, not according to how much money you're willing to uh, to lose. Now, uh, before I carry on, 
uh, let you ponder that for a moment. I'm going to have my a sip of espresso from my beautiful little uh, cup that I picked up in Cancun, Mexico last year. Uh, excuse me, uh, let me have a sip of that. Mm. Okay, oh, that's beautiful. Uh, nectar of the gods, not beer, it's coffee. Um, so, uh, what we're uh, now you might be thinking, well, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, right? I mean, how can I set my stop loss so far away? It's uh, up here or down here. Right, this is more money than I can lose. Well, let me tell you what uh, professional traders do. They again set their stop loss levels according to the market volatility, right? Where they think the price could go. But they adjust their trading volume, right? Based on how much money they're going to lose. Okay, so now you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, that sounds hellishly complicated. But if you uh, go onto the navigator window in your MetaTrader, you'll see that um, there's an order chart as risk calculator uh, indicator there. And what you can do is you can drag and drop that onto your chart. And I'll show you what happens in, um, in just a moment. If I can just find my stop loss level, there it is. Okay, when that happens, you'll actually see a little window come up and you'll also see this orange, uh, this orange line uh, come up, right? And this is your stop loss level. So what this tells you, the stop loss level actually, if you, let's say, set it, let's just go for the initial example I had before and I want to go short, right? So if I want to go short and I want to set my stop loss um, at this price over here, 112.45, uh, and, and I am willing to risk $100 on my position, right? This is what this little indicator is saying over here, $100 then it's telling me the risk calculator telling me that my position size should be 0.2 lots what does that mean if i go new order and um, i want to set my stop loss at this level over here stop loss and i want to uh, only risk a hundred dollars i would set my position to be 0.2 okay and then i would click sell Right, I don't have enough. Oh, trading is disabled on my account. Right, I can't actually trade uh, on this account. But now you understand what I'm trying to say, right? So let me just circle that for you using the drawing tool. You can see the volume here is 0.2, and the volume here is 0.2. So in this scenario, what would happen? Um, um, I was trying to go short, but if the price went up to this level, despite the fact that this price, this stop level, is well. A ton of pips away. I can't even see. My eyes are not good enough to see how small that font is, but it's an absolutely fortune of pips, right? Oh, actually, here it is. It's 36 pips, right? Which is a massive uh, move in the wrong direction. I would still only risk $100. Okay? So let that sink in. Let all of that sink in. I'm going to erase all my drawing tools and I'm going to uh, try this again. So normally what I would do is I would say, oh, I only want to risk $100. This is where my stop loss should be set, right? Like at about 10 pips, right? So if I was going short, but this might not be the right stop level, okay? So again, I'm setting my stop level where it's supposed to be, and then I'm using the volume indicator uh, to calculate how much actual volume to set on my position. Now, the other thing you might be thinking is, oh, but this is really easy to calculate. Why do I need a tool for this? Because um, obviously, Euro USD, every pip is worth 10 bucks, right? So, or well, one buck if you're using a mini account, or right? So, um, on a standard account, it's uh, it's uh, 10 bucks a pip, so it's easy. Uh, 36 pips away, um, and uh, or 37 pips away, and uh, you know that's 10 bucks a pip. That's 370. Only want to lose 100. Divide that by four or five, whatever it is. It gives me 0.2. Easy to calculate, right? But now, what happens if you don't use your USD? What if you use something? What if you want to trade something more obscure? Okay, let's say uh, USD CAD. Okay, USD CAD is not 10 bucks a pip. Right, Euro, USD CAD is definitely not 10 bucks a pip, right? So now, let's say USD CAD, I wanna go short. Uh, if I wanna go short, I certainly don't want to set 
my uh, stop loss level um, at this point over here, right? Because it's only 14 pips, I'm getting knocked out due to noise and there's nothing worse than getting knocked out uh, due to noise. What I would do if I was going short, I would maybe look at this point over here, right? This level here to go, to go short. Uh, uh, right as my stop loss. Okay, so if I wanted to go uh, 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 short right now, what I would be doing is obviously setting how much risk I want to, uh, how much money I want to risk. So let's say $100, or let's say I only want to risk $10 on this on this position, right? Then it would tell me my volume should be 0 0.02. So if I place a new order, right, and I want to go short and set my stop loss to that level, and uh, then I should set my stop loss to be 0 0.02 right and then i would click sell but that's not the only thing that you might be trading right i mean you could be trading uh something really obscure uh where you don't actually know how much uh, uh how much every pip costs let's look at uh, i don't know uh choose something really difficult uh, gvp jpy okay <clears throat> I hope uh, the system recognizes this R as suffix. It should. Uh, let's drop that on there. Okay, let's see where uh, this level is. Okay, GBP, JPY. Even experienced traders like me cannot work out, um, uh, cannot work out uh, how much a pip is worth on GBP, JPY just off the top of my head. Okay, it would take me a, a few minutes and um, and a pen and a piece of paper to look at it, and I'd need the cross rates for uh, uh, pound yen and uh, uh, USD yen to actually work it out. Uh, but here, yeah, um, this calculator works it out immediately for you, right? So what you're doing is um, let's look at an example. This time, let's say I want to go long. Now, some of you might look at this thing and say, okay. I want to set my pip, my risk 20 pips away because 20 pips is a big movement. That's you know over 100 bucks of of loss, potential loss on a standard account. This is where I want to set my my stop loss if I want to go long. But if you go long on GBP JPY and set your stop loss 20 pips away, you're guaranteed to hit it, right? <laughs> Even at low volatility periods, uh, GBP JPY is, is the killer of all uh, traders, right? You, you, you're going to go uh, long and you're going to get knocked out of the market within uh, five to 10 minutes, okay? So what you want to do is you want to find a reasonable place to set your stop loss, right? So for example, I see a consolidation level, a bit of a consolidation level over here. Um, so this is potentially where I would set my my uh, uh, stop loss, okay? Um, and so then my question is, how much money do I actually risk? So if I want to risk, uh, um, uh, let's say, twenty dollars on this position, uh, that's a bit of a weird one. Let's say I want to risk fifty dollars on this position. Then again, it tells me what my uh, volume should be. Okay, so uh, I actually wish that I could actually uh, trade on this on this account. Unfortunately, I haven't been given a, a live account I can trade on. But what you'll see you'll en will end up happening is that um, you can, using this risk calculator, you can actually trade uh, one minute, five minute, 15 minute, hourly, daily charts, weekly charts, set your stop losses based on the amount of capital that you're willing to risk okay and trade across all those time frames and all your positions will only have a risk uh, kind of will pretty much be guaranteed of only risking the amount of capital that you put in here obviously given uh, certain parameters for example market uh, slippage or you know big market gaps you know obviously your 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 stop losses won't get hit but but essentially your your uh, only risking the amount of capital you set into the risk calculator. Right? Now, uh, one question I get asked often, which I want to point out, is that um, uh, uh, this uh, live account that I have over here um, is uh, based in, uh, it's, an, it's an Australian dollar account, right? So you can see that my account uh, matches uh, what's shown in the risk calculator. Uh, now, um obviously if you're uh, if you have a euro account you'll see euros if you have a us dollar account it'll be us us dollars right so so the the risk calculator will always work out uh, the risk in 
um, in the currency of your of your account, which is quite a, a handy uh, thing. Uh, I see a lot of very interesting uh, the uh, um, uh, a lot of interesting uh, questions coming up, and I will deal with them in just a moment. Okay, uh, once I have my last sip of espresso, which means my CPU will start running at almost 100%. Okay. So before I start answering the questions, I want to I want to deal with one or two more advanced topics. Um, so well, actually, one specifically more advanced topics, and that is some of you uh, might be, uh, let's say, uh, more mature in your uh, uh, trading experience, and you might not be uh, reactive in your uh, position taking, which means you're not trading the spot price. You're rather you're trading, uh, let's say, some kind of uh, 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 stop or limit orders. In which case, we can uh, this calculator can help you too. All you do is you tick this little icon here called Custom Entry Price. And when you click on custom entry price, you will see that a green line appears, right? So now what will happen is that if you're using this little green line, uh, let's just say we want to place a sell limit on uh, GBP JPY. Sell limit, for those of you who, who, are, who are not aware, a sell limit is where, um, where uh, let me draw a drawing object. The price goes up, crosses that line, and if it touches that line, uh, the system will automatically go uh, short for you. Okay, so um, now, so you're not taking a position right now on on GBPJPY, taking a sell limit. So the green line is where you want the the, the system to uh, to take a short position for you. Now, in this situation, um, how do we work out the risk? So uh, what what will happen if you click on custom entry price? Uh, the auto charts risk calculator works out the risk not between the current spot price um, and the orange line. It'll calculate it between the between your uh, green line and orange line, right? So in this situation, 94 pips is the difference between the green line and the and the orange line, right? The 94 pips is listed. Okay, so. Uh, so now uh, the volume here, uh, let me use my drawing object again. My volume here is based on this uh, difference here, right? Okay, I hope that makes sense to everyone. Um, if you're using a stop and limit or, uh, uh, orders, you you know that that should make sense to you. Again, um, uh, let's say uh, we're using, um, let's say we're going to use a sell stop order, right? A sell stop meaning. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'll explain it now. Uh, let's give it a moment. Uh, a sell stop means that uh, we're not taking a short position right now. We're waiting for the price to cross this line. And then once it crosses this line, then it would go short. Okay? So in this situation, uh, you can uh, set the green line where you want the entry to be. And then you set your orange line where you want the stop loss to, to be right so maybe at the stop loss at the, at the current spot level but again the volume that's shown over here uh, is based on this difference okay on the difference between the 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 entry price and the uh, stop uh, level uh, price okay uh, another question that i often get asked is why can't you uh, why don't you can't trade directly off the risk calculator um, we decided not to add that buy and sell buttons into the risk calculator. There has been talk about it, but you do have to actually click the order button and then set your, uh, you know, your your volume, your stop levels, uh, whatever it happens to be, and click buy and sell. Right. So we still depend on the um, on the MetaTrader built-in order functionality in order to place um, the, you know, the actual order in in the market, right, or the pending order, whatever whatever it happens to be. Okay. So, um, uh, so uh, Anthony, uh, to answer your question, because yours is a quick one, absolutely, uh, the risk calculator works on all the other instruments. Uh, so it should. If it if it doesn't, I've got uh, someone to talk to uh, to get it working. But here's, for example, uh, UK uh, 100, 
Um, there it is over there. There's your risk calculator. You can see your 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 stop level coming up or down. And I do believe that um, it works on shares. Uh, let's try add VW in there. What's actually moving right now? Um, let's wait for some updates. Oh, here we go. Allianz is moving a little bit. Let's see. There is the risk calculator for, for Allianz. Um, so as you can see, yes, it does. Although, uh, uh, right, I mean, um, in when trading shares, you know, there it's, it, uh, obviously it adds value because your account is not in US dollars and or in euros and the actual uh, uh, instruments are priced in, in, in euros and US dollars, right? So it, it is obviously does add a little bit of value, but for example, um, I don't see anything that's, uh, for example, listed in Japan here, right? So there's no, I don't think Japanese stocks, uh, right, or or any other strange currency pairs. So mostly euro and uh, USD based uh, stocks, right? So um, so the calculations are slightly easier with those if you had to do them manually. Okay. Um, so the next uh, the next uh, uh, topic that I wanted to talk about is this thing called um, show expected trading ranges. Uh, oh, and it looks like um, I'm having a bit of an error. I might uh, not have that data. Let's um, let's quickly see what's uh, what's going on. Um, oh, hmm, I don't have that data. That's a bit strange. Okay, give me a second, everyone. I want to see why I'm not getting my expected trading range information. Showing on my graph. Oh, I definitely have the expected trading ranges. I wonder why uh, I'm not actually uh, seeing it. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. That's okay. We can achieve the same thing uh, just by uh, having the uh, order chartist uh, indicator there. I'm sorry for that. Uh, some something some obviously some technical issue. Um, uh, but but pretty much the same thing that I'm showing you right now. When you click the expected uh, trading ranges, oh, that's so strange. They were showing before, but not now. Uh, that's the most peculiar thing ever. <laughs> okay, so dealing with uh, dealing with technical issues, uh, let's let's try do my best to get those. So ignore the fact that I'm putting the order chartist indicator on the chart um, to get those uh, lines on the right hand side. I'm just going to minimize it as if it's not there. Um, and then I'm going to put my uh, order chart risk calculator on here and act as if they came up because I uh, ticked the show expected trading ranges icon. Okay. <laughs> what the expected trading ranges are um, is uh, a, uh, a view on what kind of volatility you can expect on that instrument um, in the next an hour, four hours, and uh, and twenty four hours, right? So so as you as you are well aware, the U.S. markets are still mm, say two two and a half hours away from being really really volatile. Uh, so right now uh, we're expecting for the next hour Euro USD to trade within that price range, and in the next four hours to trade within this price range and in the next 24 hours uh, to trade in this price range over here. But obviously, as you start moving uh, into uh, the US session, right, what you are going to see is you're going to see this uh, hourly range expanding tr quite dramatically. Right? So you're going to start seeing it increase uh, in size. So uh, these expected trading ranges are uh, are there to give you an indication of the kind of volatility you can expect. Now it's uh, quite interesting to use them in conjunction. Well, in the risk calculator, obviously that's why we put the expected trading ranges uh, um, uh, 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 checkbox here. Ah, oh, and I made that mistake again. Oh, I can't believe I. <laughs> just uncheck that. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. We'll get that error looked at, uh, obviously, uh, ASAP. Uh, some, I'm sure it's some minor minor glitch. Um, uh, uh, let me just put that back on there. Um, uh, 
So, um, so that's why we put this little uh, checkbox over here, right? Um, because what we can see now is, let's say, this is back to the same example we're using before on EURUSD. Let's say I want to go short on EURUSD right now, and I set my stop loss up at uh, 112.45. Uh, this uh, uh, the expected trading ranges is showing me that if the stop loss is going to be hit, it's within the next four hours, right? So it it uh, it shows me uh, approximately what my um, expected trading time is on my on my stop loss side, right? I, I mean, I guess uh, if you're setting a take profit, uh, it would it would show you the equivalent on the take profit side, right? Uh, obviously, so let's just take a drawing tool here. If, let's say my you set your take profit uh, level somewhere over here, um, then you would say, okay, well. If my stop loss hits, it's somewhere in the next four hours. If my take profit hits, it's somewhere between uh, four and uh, and uh, four hours and uh, 24 hours, right? Um, and but but keep in mind that um, that obviously these 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 numbers uh, fluctuate um, up, kind of open and close as the time of day uh, goes by. But I will tell you that primarily it's the four-hour uh, volatility that changes. Obviously the the daily volatility that's shown right now um, and the four hourly volatility takes into account the fact that the US markets are going to be opening uh, in the next few hours, right? So, so what, you, what, what I expect uh, to happen in the next kind of two to three hours, uh, specifically on Euro, is that only the, um, the, the, the hourly expected price range is going to increase. The, the four hourly and the daily are probably going to remain uh, very much the same, kind of just move up and down uh, within the same range with, with the current spot price. Okay, so wow, I've been talking for 25 minutes solid. Uh, I am, that was that was pretty, pretty intense. Uh, I wonder if I can have a look at some of the uh, questions that are coming up. Um, all right. Um, trading ranges, I dealt with that one. Um, yes, uh, it, it works on instruments. Uh, is the risk calculator available to all uh, FP market clients? Uh, yes, I believe it is. I believe it's um, it's available to. I do believe you, you need a live account though. Uh, but contact uh, uh, contact FP markets uh, to find out if there's any hurdles. But I do believe it's open for a live funded account. Um, there's a question here from GP, and I don't quite understand it. How uh, do you account for margin in the risk uh, manage uh, in risk management? Okay, so right, uh, that's a great question, and the answer is we don't account for margin. Uh, well, I mean, it depends on how much margin you want to risk, but uh, your your margin uh, requirements are based obviously on um, on your agreement with a broker, right? Uh, sometimes that's uh, 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 done as broker as a whole. Uh, sometimes uh, a broker, let's say, if you uh, uh, let, let's say if you if you um, uh, deposit a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars for brokers, these are relatively small amounts. You probably won't be able to negotiate your own margin, custom margin. Um, you would fit within the um, general policy of the the broker uh, if you deposit uh, half a million dollars with the broker um, then you can probably have a conversation with a broker to discuss your margin requirements okay so uh, you know they wouldn't set their margin requirement let's say 50 percent but at 20 uh, percent or something like this right uh, you know um uh, so every uh, a trader's margin is different and so in the risk calculator we don't take into account margin so um G given that example, you can see my balance uh, is a hundred dollars, and I'm risking hypothetically a uh, hundred dollars. Obviously, I can't trade this, right? I won't have enough margin <laughs> to 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 trade that, right? So, so in in this scenario, uh, you might, you know, I might only be able to set a uh, uh, risk uh, ten dollars, right? Uh, but the numbers become really, really small from a volume perspective, and that's not what I wanted to uh, to show you uh right um so uh but to be to to you know the long story short in terms of your answer the answer is uh we don't take margin uh requirements into account at the risk calculator it's up to you as a trader to make sure that your 
the amount of capital that you're uh, risking is within your margin requirements that the broker has specified for your account. Um, uh, 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 Farouk, I hope I've uh, uh, exp um, uh, said that name correctly. Uh, yes, it does work for indices. Um, I did answer that question slightly earlier. Uh, yeah, it absolutely works for indices and, and stocks. Um, okay, and so uh, with that, um, uh, with that, I think I have uh, given you a lot of information. I I am really, really hoping that in these crazy uh, disease-filled, uh, virus-filled wor uh, world uh, and crazy volatility, I I'm hoping that um, the people listening to to me today would have maybe hopefully saved their account uh, and uh, helped themselves last a little longer in volatile times. Um, so please do use uh, the order charts risk calculator. Um, and um, I'll see you at the next webinar. Have a nice day.